like in the when you go to department stores, you see clothing over a mannequin. Well, we made a mannequin for this animal, and then we took the skin and we glued and sewed it over the mannequin. So Frank Greenwell, the chief taxidermist at the Smithsonian's Museum of Natural History, spends most of his time repairing and renovating exhibits, some dating back to the early days of the museum. This is a, a mounted specimen of an English setter done by William T. Hornaday in 1882. I'm not sure who painted the background, but he mounted the animals. And you also might note that there's some Bob White down here that this animal is actually pointing. It's called coming to the point. William Temple Hornaday, the chief taxidermist of the National Museum from 1882 till 1892, was a well-published author and respected zoologist. He was the director of the New York Zoological Park and a dedicated wildlife preservationist whose 50-year struggle to preserve North American wildlife kept many species from extinction. William Temple Hornaday, you know, wrote this great uh, history of wild animals in the United States, a multi-volume work in which he excited people about the wonder and beauty of the animals. And all conservation movements need that excitement of the public, and that was a great contribution. He really introduced the idea that zoo animals should breed, and at the uh, New York Zoo, he had a stellar set of exhibits, and people got involved in wanting to do something about endangered species. William T. Hornaday um, was a, uh, a student here at Iowa State, like I am, uh, started his formal education here, and became a, a uh, animal a conservationist, a very early activist before most people were even concerned about the extinction of species. And because of William Hornaday's efforts during the 1890s, Buffalo Bill Jackson is able to research the nutritional aspects of buffalo meat. And the preservation of the North American bison may hold the key to some long-standing medical questions. Bison are now only one of two animals in the whole animal kingdom in the whole world that has been, never have been known to have had cancer. And the other group of animals is the sharks, which are a very ancient uh, fish. Uh, Born in 1854, Hornaday grew up hunting the plentiful wild game around Eddyville, Iowa. Although he left Ames at the age of 19, he's written that it was as a student at the Iowa Agricultural College where he discovered his life's work. There was not very many specific courses uh, in uh, animal science at that point, but they mainly took a lot of general courses. And, but he did uh, some mounting of, of, of uh, animals and birds, specifically the museum here, yet still has a pelican. And in 1927, 50 some years after this pelican was first put on display, Iowa State College placed a commemorative plaque on the campus, honoring Hornaday's achievements. Well, Ward's Natural Science Establishment was in uh, Rochester, New York. And when Hornaday joined that organization in the early 1870s, it was probably the prominent natural science establishment of its kind. Hornaday went there as a taxidermist. Uh, Ward eventually sent him around the world collecting specimens for the establishment. Um, he went to Florida, Cuba, to South America. In 1882, at the age of 28, he was appointed chief taxidermist of the United States National Museum in Washington, D.C. The orangutan display that Hornaday collected personally in uh, Indonesia, in Borneo, the 1880s at least, uh, was one of his pride and joys. He personally went there, uh, studied the animals, uh, collected the animals, uh, measured them extensively, and then bought these animals back to the Smithsonian and mounted them in a natural habitat position so that people can understand why they live in such an environment. And so he started to paint backgrounds and, and collect materials such as plant materials and then put the animals in these natural habitats and it was, it caught on very fast. In 1886 he was sent out to Montana to uh, collect some specimens for, uh, for bisons for the species cluster. And he was out in the range uh, for several days and came across a, across a one uh, horse town and where there was a uh, saloon slash hotel slash bar slash brothel with uh, three rooms and they were all occupied. And so the 
concierge slash director slash madam said, well, if you wish, you may share one of the three rooms with a young man who's also here and who has the room to himself. 20 years later, in 1906, great-grandfather was invited to the White House. And uh, as he alighted from his vehicle, Teddy Roosevelt, at the, from the portal of the White House, boomed out, Dr. Hornaday, how grand to see you again. Tell me, sir, do you still snore? A toast to the ranchman of Chimney Butte by the Little Missouri's flood, where he won his spurs in his hunting trips as a genuine sportsman should. We have stalked with him for the weary deer. We have galloped through driving rains. We have felt with him on the prong bucks trail the mist. William itself. Temple Hornaday became the nation's most forceful voice for conservation during the early 1900s as he rode and lobbied tirelessly to turn back the tide of species and habitat destruction. The New York Zoological Society published and distributed his comparative survey, Our Vanishing Wildlife, which proposed changes in the law, international treaties, and promoted the creation of preserves that remain the basis of our national wildlife policy today. Under Hornaday's direction, the New York Zoological Park shipped 29 head of bison to start herds in Oklahoma and South Dakota, which brought the species back from the brink of extinction.